Things to do before submitting music to music libraries. For indie musicians and songwriters who don't yet have connections in publishing and licensing, music libraries are one way you can seek revenue generating opportunities. Here are a couple of things you should do before submitting your songs to music libraries. First, get your music ready for licensing. Choose three to five tracks from your catalog. Even if you're not 100% confident in your tracks, as a songwriter, being a perfectionist can hold you back. Of course, before you submit your songs for any licensing opportunity, you want to make sure everything is properly registered with a performance rights organization. Quality is key in music licensing, and the absolute last thing you want is to have the perfect song for placement only get turned down because the audio quality isn't up to industry standard. Always export high quality MP3s, preferably 320 KPBs, and WAV files, preferably 24 bit 48 kilohertz. Here are some basic guidelines to keep in mind when it comes to audio quality 24 bit is better than 16 bit, 320 KPBs is better than 256 KPBs, which is better than 128 KPBs. WAV and AIFF are better than MP3. 48 kilohertz is preferable to 44 kilohertz for any music that will be used on video because that's the standard for TV and film. Metadata embedded into your music tracks will allow libraries, publishers, and music supervisors to find and contact you should they want to use your song. At the very least, have the following information in your metadata. Track name, artist name, album name, genre, recording or release date, email address, and website. It's important to research music libraries. Music libraries are just one of the many ways you can seek music licensing opportunities. They are also one of the most accessible, especially for musicians and songwriters who don't yet have many connections in the publishing and licensing industry. Essentially, music libraries are platforms that curate music and make it available for ad agencies, YouTubers, podcasters, independent filmmakers, TV music supervisors, and others to license and use music in their projects. As you research music libraries, you should analyze the music they already have. Is your music an obvious fit? Is there a gap in their catalog you might be able to fill? Find out how to submit music to them. You'll usually find the information on the FAQ or contact pages. Find out if they sign tracks on exclusive or non-exclusive music licensing deals. Check out the description box under the video for a list of music libraries you can start with. The last thing to do is submit, submit, submit. Submit to as many libraries as make sense for your brand of music. There's not much to explain here. Just make sure you follow the submission guidelines of each library. They will each have their own guidelines. If you don't take the time to follow them, they won't take the time to check out your music. As you start submitting, remember that continual action will get you far in the world of music licensing. Don't worry if you don't have a publisher, a big catalog, or a top mastering engineer working on your tracks. You don't need any of those things to get your music licensed. They might help, but you don't need them. Try taking one hour every day over seven days to get started. Commit to that and the momentum will start building. There are a few ways you get paid if your songs get licensed. First, a synchronization fee is paid by whomever is licensing your music from the music library. Depending on the terms of the agreement you signed with the library, you will probably get a percentage of that sync fee. Check out our previous video on sync licensing for more info. Then there's performance royalties. If your music is played on TV, radio, or internet, you could receive performance royalties based on the number of plays. That's where your performance rights organization, or PRO, comes in. A PRO oversees collection of royalties for you. We have whole other videos explaining performance royalties if you need more information on this. Finally, there's ad revenue. If your music is used in a YouTube video, you could receive a share of the ad revenue. However, this side of the business gets tricky because you need your music to be part of YouTube's content ID program. That can create a whole host of problems for music libraries you work with. 
If you're just starting out, our advice is don't worry about this type of revenue just yet. Now, would you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you'll know about new informational videos we post? And please, let us know your thoughts on music libraries in the comments section.